Hello! This video will walk you through how to enter a positive trip report or those trip reports where you did actually have a landing or went commercial fishing. First, I want to go over a few frequently asked questions regarding the positive trip reports. First, what information should you include in an eTrips report? The eTrips report will capture the exact same data that the paper report form captured previously. Now this means that these trip reports need to include any trip where fishing occurred under the authority of your commercial permit. Simply put, you're reporting commercial activity, not recreational activity. That means that the fish you're retaining are within the open commercial season and are within the commercial size and bag limit. These fish could be sold to a dealer or taken for personal use. Additionally, all cultured harvest, as in private aquaculture, should be reported when selling the product to a dealer. This is the same as the paper report form requirements, and in this case, the cultured harvest transactions should use the aquaculture catch source designation. There is a video dedicated to the catch source also available on this YouTube page. So when are reports due? Completed reports for one calendar month's trips are due by the 15th of the following month. For example, all reports for January are due by February 15th. All reports for June are due by July 15th. Now negative reports can actually be filed in advance if you know you will not be fishing until a certain point in time in the future, or if you know you will not be fishing, for example, in November and December of this year, you can submit those reports now. So what happens if you're late with your reports? If reports are submitted more than 30 days after the due date, that reporting period will receive a grade of late. Now, at the end of the year, if reports are late for more than 25% of the months, that permit will be put in probation for the following year. If the permit holder again fails the reporting requirement for the following year, that permit will face revocation or suspension the next year. This is the same for paper reports and for electronic reports. Lastly, if you have just renewed your permit, do you have to report from the beginning of the year? Yes, you are responsible for reporting the entire year, regardless of when you obtain your permit. However, the compliance grade that I just described will only be determined by evaluating submission dates for those months starting with the one in which your permit was issued. So for example, if you got your permit in June, the compliance grade will be calculated only on the months from June to December and not from January to May. However, you are still responsible for reporting that did not fish activity from January to May. As always, if you have any questions, please give us a call. Our phone number and email are listed here, and you can find more information and further questions on our website, which is also listed here. So let's get started. You can watch the welcome video to learn how to get to this screen and for more information about accessing eTrips. I call this your eTrips homepage, and I call this box on the left your gray navigation box. Now I also supplied a video on how to set up your favorites. I recommend that you watch that video and set up your own favorites prior to trying to enter a trip report. That will save time and make the data entry process that much easier. So let's click on trip reports. Once you're on this page, down here, this is where all your completed trip reports will appear. Again, you have the calendar on the right. This shows what days have trip reports entered in them. Same as the negative reports, you have a drop-down menu for year. If you have data entered from previous years by us, you will have other years that will show up in this drop-down menu. You can choose 2013, 2012, etc and you can view those trips from those years. All right, so to get started, let's click on this Create New Trip Report button. Now, if you watch the Favorites video, you'll see that I already set all the favorites for this account. All of those favorites are now populated in this trip report. I can just enter a few things and the trip report will be complete. First thing you need to enter is start date. If you're typing it in, it does need to be in this month, month, day, day, year, 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 year format or you can choose the calendar. I'm going to pick one off the calendar. I'm going to choose June 16th. You do have to put in your start time and military time. So I'm going to put in 0600. Military time is indicated by the HH24. So if you're putting in 6 a.m., you would put in 0600. If you're putting in 6 p.m., it would be 1800. You can ignore this partner VTR field. That's not required. And you'll see that both my efforts are in here as well. I have lobster pots and hook and line. So the only thing on these lines that I need to change is this fishing time. So fishing time, I need to change the soak time for lobster pots, and they were in for four days. And for hook and line, I was out for six hours. So basically, this trip is describing that I went out to pick up the lobster pots, and while I was doing that, 
I had a couple of lines in the water and it took about six hours to do so. I did actually have 100 pots that I hauled out of my 200 in the water. However, remember, if any of those numbers change, you can always just highlight and change those numbers. So say I, instead I did 150, you just type that in and put it back to 100. All right, and then you come down to your species list. So I have seven species lines in my favorites. You can see they're all listed here twice. The first, they indicate with an effort number one, and the second with an effort number two. Now if you go back up to your effort line, you'll see that effort number one is the lobster pots and effort number two is the hook and line. So you wanna make sure that these effort numbers match the species that you're linking the effort to. So for example, my hook and line is gonna be the striped bass, the bluefish, fluke, and sea bass, whereas the lobster pots and the Jonah crabs are gonna come from the lobster pots. I'm gonna say I caught 32 pounds of lobster via the lobster pots. So if you look at that effort number one, so find the effort number one, lobster, and type in the 32. These were placed in a car, and if you watch the catch source video, you'll understand more about this. But at the end of the line is catch source, so I want to change that to card as well. Okay, I'm going to say I also caught 55 pounds of Jonah crab in those lobster pots. Remember, I sold it to a dealer. So I just come over here, and my, I select my dealer. My lobster and crabs went to Captain Joe's and Sons. And while I was out there with my hook and line, I caught 75 pounds of fluke. So in this case, my hook and line is effort number two. So I'll go down, find effort number two, find the fluke line, and type in 75. Again, sold to dealer, so I need to choose my dealer. And in this case, I sold that to Red's Best. Now the Jonah Crab and the Fluke were not card. They were just sold directly to a dealer that same day. So they get this catch source of standard, which is default, so I don't need to actually do anything with that. If you want to see it, you can just look over here and see they all say standard except for that lobster line, which says card. And that's it. That's all I need to enter to complete a trip report. Now just one note, if I didn't want to go and search for that effort number and then find the species, I can look at this first list. I could have chose the summer flounder line here and just changed my effort number to two and put in the pounds that way. You can choose whichever way is easier for you. Last thing is that you don't need to put zeros in any of these boxes that don't have landings. What this program does is it only saves the line in which you put a reported quantity. So this report, for example, is only going to save these three lines. To save, you just click Save and Complete or hit F9, and it brings you to your verification screen. What you want to do is approve this, this trip by checking that box that's basically like a signature. And then you can review. You can look at your header information, make sure that's correct. Then you can look at the gear and the species landings, make sure everything matches up properly. Who it was sold to, the pounds, the catch source, the gear, everything is in here. If that's the only trip that you're entering today, you can click finish and go back to the home screen. You can print a confirmation page. Or you can click New Trip and go directly to a blank trip report form. If you see an error, however, and you need to go back and fix it, just click this Edit Trip button here. For right now, I'm going to click Finish and show you that now that trip report falls into the list here. And now you have a blue mark on that day on the calendar on your right. If you ever need to edit a trip, you can just click this button here and it'll bring you back into that trip. If you ever need to delete a trip, you can just click the checkbox here and then click the red delete trip button here. I'm going to go in and do another example. I'll click create new trip report. I'm going to use a start day of June 19th. My start time was 0400. In this case, I didn't actually use, do the lobster pots. I just did hook and line. I'm actually going to delete this effort. Now I just have hook and line, so all I need to do is update the fishing time. I was out for eight hours. And I was straight bass fishing. In this case, I kept 18 pounds for myself and I sold another 95 pounds. I also caught 15 pounds of bluefish, which I also sold to a dealer. I'm just gonna come over here, put in my dealer of Red's Best. These are all standard trips, so I don't need to update catch source. And that's it. So I'm just gonna come down here, hit save and complete, approve, and review.
Now, I know I chose a date that was outside of the striped bass season this year. That's because you can't actually enter a trip in the future, and I'm making this video before the striped bass season opens. So I used a Thursday because that is an open season day, but just remember that these trip reports should match the commercial seasons. If you're fishing on an off commercial day, that is a recreational trip. You should abide by the recreational limits and not report them via e-trips. Gonna hit finish again. Now you have two trips listed here and on the calendar these two days are filled out. Now you'll remember that in my first trip report I actually carved some lobster so that means that eventually I'm gonna have to remove those from a car in order to sell them to a dealer or to mark them as kept for personal use etc. So if you go back to your e-trips menu up here in the gray bar you can click on that and now this fishbowl will appear here. Please watch the next video on how to remove for sale everything that you placed in a car, and that will be done through this fishbowl function. If I go back into trip reports, again remember you can edit, you can delete anything that's necessary. If you have any questions, please contact us at the phone number or email listed here, and you can also find additional information on our website. Thanks for watching!